what is it? Another case for Nick Carter, master detective. Yes, it's another case for that most famous of all manhunters, the detective whose ability at solving crime is unequaled in the history of detective fiction. Nick Carter, Master Detective. Tonight's curious adventure... The Unwilling Accomplice. Or Nick Carter and the Mystery of the Society Burglar. Hello, Lieutenant. What's new and interesting? Well, well, if it ain't my old friend Nicholas Carter, him that used to be a detective. Yeah, what do you mean, used to be? Uh, sure, my boy, tell me. How does it feel to be old and retired? Oh, come now, Riley, I get it. A little peeve because I've turned down those few cases you've offered me lately. It's not a few separate cases, Nick. It's all been the same gang, I'm sure of it. Uh, they're the slickest bunch this department's ever been up against. We need your help, Nick. Look at this. Came over the wire only this morning. Hmm. Another society robbery. Quite a haul. Yes, my boy, quite a haul. $75,000 in gems right out of the vault. What do you say now, Nick? Riley, I think you're right. Looks like the same hand in every job. Well? Well, I suggest that for your criminal, you look for someone who's accepted in the homes of society. And is just about the greatest safecracker in the country as well. Oh, thank you, Nick. That's a very great help, I'm sure. Oh, I'm sorry, Riley, but really, I'm not interested. You know I don't take a case unless... Well, what in the name of... Wow, that was close. That stone missed you by inches. Sure, somebody's trying to bean me now, is it? Well, I'll fix that. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute, Riley. That isn't it. This seems to be a little matter of communication. Communication? Yes, look. There's a note tied to that stone. Well, now, hand that over here. Here you are. Well, let's see what it... What is... Well, I... Listen to this, Nick. My dear Lieutenant Riley, since the jobs I have pulled off lately have so completely mystified your department, may I suggest that you call upon the services of your very good and able friend, Nicholas Carter. What's that? Uh, it won't help much, of course, but at least I'll then have an adversary more worthy of my talents. Hmm. You see, I'm varying the pattern and going on to much bigger things. Today it has been the National Loan and Trust Company. It is not only theft, but murder as well. Hmm. Well, Nick, what do you make of that? Very interesting. Interesting, is it? Why, the cheek of him. The, the National Loan and Trust Company, he says. And murder, he says. We're dealing with a conceited maniac. Give me that phone. I'm going to check up on this. Unless it's now 5.30 on Saturday afternoon, Riley. I doubt that you'll find anyone at the bank. Uh, Excuse me, Lieutenant. Yeah? The lady and gentleman here to see you. They say it's most urgent. Well, what are you waiting for? Show them in. Yes, sir. This way, please. Thank you. Lieutenant Riley? Yes? Permit me to introduce myself. I'm Butler Pierce, and this is Miss Olive Belden, my fiancée. Uh, I'm pleased to make your acquaintance. Uh, well, what can I be doing for you? You can help us find Miss Belden's father. He's missing. Oh, missing, huh? Yes, Lieutenant. Dad's been gone for hours, and I'm beginning to fear something dreadful may have happened. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. This is Nick Carter, Miss Belden and Mr. Pierce. Nick Carter, the detective? The same, Miss Belden. Oh, I'm so glad, Mr. Carter. Will you... Would you, I mean... Isn't your alarm somewhat unwarranted? Your father hasn't been missing very long, I take it. That's true, Mr. Carter. Only three hours to be exact, but under the circumstances... What Miss Belden means, Mr. Carter, is that it seems as if her father had disappeared into thin air. How do you mean, Mr. Pierce? Well, the last time she saw him, it was through the living room window. From there, she could look out over the court into his private office at the bank. And when A she... bank? D did you say bank, Mr. Pierce? Why, Yes. Olive's father is Wayne Belden, president of the National Loan and Trust Company. Did you hear that, Nick? The National Loan and Trust Company. Yes, Riley. There's not a minute to be lost. Come on. Now, let me get this straight, Miss Belden. You say your father came into his private office here through that special passageway that leads from the house to the bank. That's right, Mr. Carter. Father often spent Saturday afternoons here writing letters. I see. And there was no one else in the bank at that time? No. This is Saturday, you know, and it was after banking hours, of course. Mm. When was the last time you saw your father? About one o'clock, Mr. Carter. He was sitting at his desk here writing a letter. But when I looked through the window again a few hours later, he wasn't there. You're sure he hadn't returned to the house? Positive. I'd have seen him. The passageway opens right into the living room where I was reading. Mm. Well, what happened when you looked for him... And he wasn't there. Well, just about then, Mr. Pierce called on me. 
I told him about Father's absence, and we both went to look for him. I see. About what time was that? Oh, about four o'clock. Mm-hmm. And so you you both went into the bank as soon as you missed your father? Yes. We found Mr. Belden's office, just as you see it now. Then we looked all through the bank. There wasn't a sign of him anywhere. Now, wait a minute, all of you. What was to prevent Mr. Belden from walking right out the front door of the bank? As easy as that. Well, that's not very likely, Lieutenant. He was wearing his house slippers at the time, and he had no coat or hat. Oh, and oh. not only that, Riley. You see this letter here on Belden's desk? Hmm? He was writing it when something interrupted him. Hmm. You notice anything peculiar about it? Well, no, except that he broke off in the middle of a sentence. More important than that, Riley. He stopped in the middle of a word. Belden was interrupted very abruptly. Oh, that must be the cashier now. Hello, Mr. Cook. Come in. Hello, Miss Belden. I got here just as soon as I could. This is Mr. Carter and Lieutenant Riley. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Now, now, what's all this I hear about Mr. Belden disappearing? That's right, Mr. Cook. But I have an idea. He'll soon be found. What do you mean by that, Mr. Carter? I've asked Mr. Cook to come down here because, as the cashier of the bank, he's the only one beside Mr. Belden who knows the combination to the large vault. And I want that vault opened. Immediately. But that's impossible, Mr. Carter. The large vault operates on a time lock. It can't be opened until 9 o'clock Monday morning. We can't wait that long. It must be open now. I'm sorry, Mr. Carter. That's impossible. Then I'll do it myself. But it's impossible, I tell you. Give me one hour and we'll see how impossible it is. You don't seem to be having much luck, do you, Mr. Carter? Don't you worry about that, Mr. Pierce. I never saw the lock yet that could keep its secrets from Nick Carter very long. Not that kind of lock, Lieutenant. Why, there isn't anybody in the world that could... (coughs) By heavens, he did it. There we are, gentlemen. I told you so, Pierce. Riley. Huh? Look there. What is it, Nick? There in the corner. Oh, his father. (gasps) Yes, Miss Belden. Your father's been murdered. How's Miss Belden, Riley? Oh, she's all right now, Nick. Mr. Pierce took her back to the house. Good. Well, Mr. Cook, have you finished examining the contents of the vault? Yes, Mr. Carter, and you were right. There has been a robbery. Fifty thousand dollars is missing. Well, I'll be just as the note said, Nick. Remember? Theft and murder. Yes, Riley. But the theft, I'm sure, was just an afterthought. Mr. Cook, did Mr. Belden have any enemies? Why, uh, not that I know of. What can you tell me about Mr. Pierce? What do you mean? Well, was he friendly with Mr. Belden? Oh, yes, yes, quite. They were very good friends. They'd known each other for years. And was Mr. Pierce in the habit of visiting Mr. Belden in his office at the bank? Oh, yes, yes, very often. He uh, had an account here, a rather large one, I might add. Mr. Pierce, you know, is a very wealthy man. Indeed? Yes, sir. Hey, what's that you've got in your hand there, Nick? Hmm? Oh, this, this. It's part of a cufflink, Riley, mm-hmm. with a very interesting stain on it. A fresh blood stain. Where'd you find it, Nick? In the dead man's hand. But there was no blood on the body. He, he was done in by a crack on the skull. There, there was no bleeding. Exactly, Riley. It's undoubtedly the murderer's own blood. Probably tore his hand on the broken edge of the cuff link in the scuffle. Do you uh, want me for anything else, Mr. Carter? Oh, uh, no, thank you, Mr. Cook. I'll be off. Well, good day. Good day, sir. Oh, Mr. Cook, one more thing. Yes? Tell me, is Mr. Pierce in the habit of wearing his gloves indoors? His gloves? Why, uh, why, no, never. But, uh, wait, come to think of it. He was wearing them just now, wasn't he? Yes, he was. Well, thank you, Mr. Cook. Thank you very much. Confounded, Patsy, this is the strangest case I've ever worked on. Well, you've certainly been acting strangely, Nick. Pacing up and down, muttering to yourself. There just isn't a shred of evidence anywhere, Patsy. As far as I can see, no motive whatsoever. Yet I'm positive that Butler Pierce is our man, that he's not only the murderer of Wayne Belden, but is also the society robber that's been baffling the police for months now. But, Nick, he's a rich man. And Wayne Belden was one of his best friends. I know, I know, Patsy, but it still adds up to Butler Pierce. Look, he was thoroughly familiar with the bank, thoroughly familiar with Wayne Belden's habits. He called at the Belden house after the crime had been committed. He wore his gloves indoors, which might have been to conceal a bad scratch from a broken cufflink. He arrived at police headquarters immediately after that stone had been thrown through the window. But, Nick, Miss Bellin was with him when he called to see Riley. Surely you don't think he could have thrown that stone? No, Patsy. But his chauffeur could have. While they were entering the building. His chauffeur? Yes. 
It was he who set me thinking on this line originally. Well, what do you mean by that? Patsy, I got a good look at that chauffeur. And I'm sure I've seen him somewhere before. A long time ago. Oh. And he wasn't on the right side of the law either. Well, it all sounds like a big hunch to me, Nick. Yes, you're right, Patsy. It's just what it is. A big hunch. Although I have to admit your hunches are usually pretty good. Patsy, I feel so sure this hunch is right, I'm going to play it for all it's worth. Well, what are you going to do? I'm going to start playing it right now. That's Gubby for me. We're going calling on Mr. Butler Pierce. You're taking a long time opening that safe, Nick. Well, it's a tough baby, Scubby. But I've almost got it now. Well, I sure hope so, Nick. I don't think Mr. Pierce would like to come home and find us here in his library. Well, at this stage, I grant you, that would be a trifle embarrassing. But when I get through... Ah, I did it. Now, let's see what we have here. No, not there. Scubby, look at this. Why, it's full of jewelry. And it's the real stuff. Yes. Unless I miss my bet, every piece of it will answer the description of some stolen gem. Well, let's see what else now. Uh Uh-oh. What's that, Nick? What does it look like? It looks like a package of bills. And all big ones, too. Exactly what it is, Cubby. Let's see how much. Five, ten. Boy, look at those thousand-dollar bills. Twenty, thirty, forty, forty-five, fifty thousand dollars, Cubby. The exact amount stolen from the bank. Well, of course, it could be a coincidence, Nick. Yes, it could be, but I doubt it. Ah, this does it. Scubby, we don't have to speculate any further. No. This letter I found on the drawer here clears up everything. Listen to this. Yeah. Dear Butler, this is a warning to you to permit you to escape if you care to do so. I have definite proof that you're a thief. And on Monday morning, I shall place that proof before the proper authorities. You have until that time to escape. Signed, Wayne Belden. Gosh, Nick. Yes, Scubby, gosh. And there we have the motive for Wayne Belden's murder. So your hunch was right after all, Nick. The rich Mr. Pierce is nothing but a thief. And a murderer, Scubby. Oh, well, look, Nick, you better get out of here. Scubby, it just came to me. What? Butler Pierce's chauffeur is really Jim Martin. I knew I'd seen him before. Jim Martin? I never heard of him, Nick. No, that was before your time. Oh. I tangled with him many years ago on the West Coast. One of the cleverest cracksmen in the business. He could open almost any safe I could. Oh, so that's it. He and Pierce have been working together. Yes. Pierce was a front and real brains, while Martin supplied the technical skills, so to speak. Oh, I see. Well, what now, Nick? Scubby? Yeah? I want you to clear out of here quick. Take Wayne Belden's letter with you. Mm-hmm. Get it to Lieutenant Riley immediately and tell him to pick up Jim Martin. Oh, well, what about Butler Pierce? Don't you worry about him, Scubby. I'm staying right here. I want to tackle Butler Pierce myself. <laughs> Good evening. Nick Carter, what are you doing in my house? Waiting for you, Mr. Pierce. What do you want? I want you to be reasonable and not make any fuss. This isn't the water pistol I've got in my hand. Have you gone mad? What in the world are you talking about? It's no go, Pierce. You can drop the act. I took the liberty of going through your safe. Oh, so that's it. You're pretty clever at getting into safes, aren't you? Yes. As good at it as your pal, Jim Martin. Oh, I see. Well, I guess I underrated you, Carter. No, Pierce. You overrated yourself. Perhaps. What's your next move? My next move is to turn over to the law a thief and a murderer. Turn around. Get your hands behind you. Uh Uh-huh. So there is a scratch on your wrist, just as I expected. There. Guess those handcuffs ought to hold you for a while. Sit down on that chair. And stay there. Police headquarters. Lieutenant Riley speaking. Oh, hello, Riley. This is Nick. Oh, yes, Nick. What is it? Riley, I got the murderer of Wayne Belden for you. Oh, you have, eh? Mm-hmm. Good work. Who is it, Nick? Butler Pierce. Butler Pierce? Uh, Nick, are you sure you're not making a mistake? Quite sure. Scubby should be at my headquarters any minute now with all the proof you want. Uh, where are you calling from, Nick? From Pierce's home. He's sitting in a chair right behind me with a pair of handcuffs on him. Oh. I'll expect you to... Nick! Nick, what is it? Hello! Hello! Oh, 
Nick, are you all right? Uh, oh. He's coming to now, Patsy. How do you feel, uh, Nick? Oh, I'm all right, I guess. Oh, brother, my head. Yeah, that was a nasty bump you got, my boy. Oh, I'll take it easy, Nick. Here, give me your hand. Uh, I'll, I'll help up you up. you go, Nick. Take it easy. All right, so now. Sorry. Uh, can you stand up all right, boy? Yeah, I guess I'm okay now. Well, what happened? Well, your guess is as good as mine, Patsy. All I know is that I had Butler Pierce in my hands, and now he's gone. Uh, that's too bad, Nick. Hey, look at the safe. It's empty. Well, naturally it would be. You couldn't leave all that evidence lying around. Well, it's a good thing we got that letter at least. Yes, but the important thing is to find Pierce. He must be pretty clever, Nick, getting away from you like that. Yes, Patsy. He's all of that and more. He got away this time. But I'll bring him to justice if it's the last thing I ever do. Well, Nick, we got Jim Martin anyway. Picked him up late last night. Good work, Riley. Well, that's half the gang anyway. Yeah, now if we only had Butler Pierce... Yes, but I think it's going to be a lot easier now with Jim Martin in our hands. Uh, what do you mean? Got an idea, Riley. If it works, it won't be long before we catch up with Wayne Belden's murderer. Well, Martin, we meet again. Yeah. It's been a long time, ain't it, Carter? Yes. But I never forget a face, Martin. No matter how much has been changed. I must say, though, that the doctor did a pretty good job on you. But it just isn't quite good enough. Yeah, you're a smart egg, all right. I guess the boss knows that by now. He's a pretty keen one himself, Martin. I had him, but he got away. He did, huh? Mm-hmm. Boy, he sure is a slick one. And well, I thought when I had the cuffs on him... Say, that... you didn't make the mistake of trying to hold him with a pair of handcuffs, did you? Yes. Why? <laughs> There ain't a pair made that could hold Butler Pierce. He's a regular whiz. Well, maybe so. Martin, you're in a pretty tough spot. Murder's serious business. Murder? Oh, no. You're barking up the wrong tree, Carter. I didn't have nothing to do with that. But you did open the vault at the bank. Sure. Like I don't know all the job for Pierce after he paved the way. But murder, that ain't my racket. Uh, maybe not. But it'll go a lot easier with you, Martin, if you play ball. Meaning? You know where Pierce's hideout is. Sure. What about it? We want you to help us put the finger on him. <laughs> now, you ought to know me better than that, Carter. That's what I thought you'd say. I have a proposition for you, Martin. You help us track him down, we'll set you free. The answer is still the same. I'm no stool pigeon. Well, Martin, we're going to let you walk out of here anyway. What do you say to that? I say it won't work, Carter. What do you mean? Listen, I'm onto your game. You're going to set me loose so you can tail me. Ain't that it? Because that's the last thing I'd ever do. And I'm telling you that right now. And yet, Martin, that's exactly what you're going to do. Lead us right to Butler Pierce. <laughs> you must be off your nut. I wouldn't even try to go near him. In fact, I'd do everything I could to throw you off. I know that, Martin. And yet, in spite of yourself, you're going to help us catch Butler Pierce. Uh, Clerk. Yes, sir? Any mail for me today? Name's Martin. James Martin. Just a minute. I'll see. No, nothing, Mr. Martin. Thanks. Hello, Martin. You expecting a letter from someone? Who are you? I'll give you one guess. That ought to be enough. Oh, you must be the guy that's following me. One of the guys, Martin. I'm Scubby Wilson. I work with Nick Carter. Ah, glad to see you. You know, I've been getting sort of anxious the last few days to know what you guys look like. <laughs> yes, I can understand that. Must have been quite a strain on you, knowing that you were being watched every minute of the day and not knowing who was doing the watching. Yeah, it was sort of getting me down a little. <laughs> well, that's what Mr. Carter was figuring on, I guess. Oh, yeah? Mm-hmm. <laughs> not a good it's going to do him. You never know, Martin. Hey, I can't figure this thing at all. Oh, you're not supposed to, Martin. No, you just keep on having a good time, that's all. You bet I will. And as for Nick Carter, you can tell him from me... 
Whatever his scheme is, it ain't working, see? How do you know it isn't working? I haven't led you to Pierce yet, have I, pal? No, not yet. But you will. <laughs> You're nuts, too. You're all nuts. Good night. Good night. Oh, but Martin, uh, knowing Nick Carter as I do, I don't think we're the ones that are nuts. <laughs> Well, Nicky, you don't look like that little plan of yours is going to pay off, does it now? Be patient, Riley. Just a question of time is all. Uh, but, but Martin's been on the loose now for over two weeks. How, how much longer are we going to wait, Nick? As long as necessary. Who oh, are we now? Yes, Riley, you agreed. Yeah. I'm positive that what we're doing is the one sure way of getting on Pierce's trail. Well, it sure don't seem very positive to me. You've got plain clothes men and detectives out looking for him, haven't you? Well, sure, we sent out a general alarm just as soon as Pierce got away from you. Have they brought him in yet? Well, uh, no. See what I mean? My way is slow, Riley, but it's sure. Well, Nick, all I can say is I wish I was as sure of that as you are. If we don't get pierced this way, they're going to laugh me right out of the department. Using up valuable men and time, just keeping an eye on a scoundrel that should be behind bars this very second. He will be, Riley. Just as soon as we get pierced, too. They're keeping company. Uh, 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 Police headquarters. Lieutenant Riley speaking. Yeah, 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 he's here. For you, Nick. Yeah. Mm, thanks, Ray. Hello? Oh, yes, Gubby. Yeah? Uh, oh, you did it. Okay, that's fine, Scabby. Good work. So long, Scabby. Well, Riley, it looks like this is it. Yeah? What happened? Did Martin finally get in touch with Pierce? No, Riley. It happened as I expected. The mountain came to Mohammed. Huh? Who did what? Unless I'm very much mistaken... Pierce has finally got in touch with Martin. Who is it? It's me, Jim. Oh. Don't you recognize my voice? Hello, Jimmy. Hello. Who are you? May I come in? Uh, look, lady, I'm afraid there's some mistake. You got the wrong party. There's no mistake, Martin. Holy Mac, it's you, Pierce. Yes, it's me. Gosh, boys, I've seen most of your disguises, but this beats them all. You really look like a woman. Thanks. Hey, uh, you shouldn't have come here, though, boys. It's dangerous. Yes, Martin, very dangerous. For you? What, what do you mean, boys? I don't like a squealer, Martin. A squealer? Me? Hey, you got this all wrong. Have I? I never ratted on anyone, boys. I wouldn't start now. Not even to save your own neck? You were in this thing as deep as I, you know. Sure, I know that, but whatever gave you the idea, I'd rat on you. What gave me the idea? <laughs> oh, well, I get it. You mean, why am I out of jail? Well, honest, boss, this wasn't my idea. Carter let me go. You see, he That's had enough, a... Martin. You think I'm a fool? Let you go, huh? Just like that. Well, I won't be so generous, stool pigeon. Hey, what are you doing, boss? No, no you ain't gonna use that gat on me. Guess again, Squealer. Hey, you're making a mistake, boss. P- please, you gotta listen to me. Let me tell you how it happened. No, Martin, you listen to me and I'll tell you. Carter didn't have a thing on me. Not a thing, do you understand? Yeah, sure. Then he spotted your ugly mug and put two and two together. I didn't think anybody would recognize that pan of yours anymore. But somehow Carter did. So he had you picked up. And what he got out of you must have been plenty. I swear to you. Shut up. Why else would Carter have let you go? I, I don't know. I'll tell you why. Because you spilled the works, Martin. Spilled the works and got your freedom for it. No. That ain't why they let me go. It was all a scheme they had. What are you talking about? Sure, boss. They told me they'd let me go if I steered them to the hideout. But I wouldn't do it. Not me. No. So they let you out anyway. Yeah, yeah, that's it. (laughs) Okay, Squealer, I've heard enough. No, no, boss, no. Great shooting, Nick. You knocked the gun right out of his hand. Nick Carter. Yes, Mr. Butler Pierce. We meet again. You all right, Martin? Yeah, I guess so, but we didn't get here any too soon. Oh, so I was right, you rat. You were expecting... Relax, Pierce, relax. Martin wasn't expecting anyone. He played square with you right along. Yes? Then what was he doing on the loose? Just a temporary arrangement, Pierce. It was a trap we set for you. And you obliged us by walking right into it. Very clever of you, Carter. Not at all. You see, Mr. Pierce, I based my plan on the belief that at bottom you were not so clever. Really? And how do you mean that? Because instead of doing the really clever thing getting as far away from here as you possibly could. I felt sure that your personal vanity would lead you to expose yourself to almost any risk in order to get the man you thought had betrayed you. 
All gangsters react that way. You can hardly consider me a gangster, Mr. Carter. At heart, that's exactly what you are. And that's what I counted on. So you had it all figured out. Yes. I also counted on your pal Martin doing exactly as he did. After we let him go, we laid low for a while. He prayed of what we were going to do. But after a few days of that, he got bored doing nothing, just as I figured he would. He made a lot of money out of jobs you two did together, and now he wanted to spend some of it. So he stepped out, visited the high spots, stayed at a fine hotel. So I heard. Yes, I knew you would. Matter of fact, I counted on it. You figured we'd let him loose and had paid him well for squealing on you. Well, Pierce, you put two and two together, all right, but you got the wrong answer. And the wrong answer you got is going to send you to the electric chair. It's the end of the road for you, Mr. Pierce. Mr. Carter, I'm going to take my hat off to you. Really, Martin? And to what am I indebted for this great honor? Well, you said I'd lead you to Pierce, and I said I wouldn't. And you made me do it. And you even knew what I was thinking all the time I did it. Yes, Carter. You're cleverer than I thought you were. Thank you, gentlemen. I'm uh, very happy I can't say the same for you two. This has been another of the strange adventures of Nick Carter, Master Detective, which are brought to you regularly at the same time each week by WOR Mutual. Uh, What's your story going to be next week, Nick? The title of the story that I want to tell you next week really gives you the clue to the whole thing. I call it The Corpse in the Cab. Oh, you mean, I suppose, that you're going to tell us how the corpse got into the cab, who the corpse was, and so on. Is that the idea? That's the idea, Mrs. Scott. But it's not nearly as simple as it sounds when you tell it. There were no clues on the corpse. No means of identification at all. That isn't quite true, Patsy. It would have been literally true if you hadn't been called in on the job. You know, Lieutenant Riley was completely stumped. Yes, but I'm not sure just how little it takes to stump our friend Riley completely. (laughs) Anyway, Mr. Scott, if Nick hadn't been able to apply a little real deductive reasoning to the few bits of evidence he could find, the case would still be a mystery. I know that. Well, Patsy, however that may be, I can assure you that next week's story will keep your guessing right to the very end. And until then, so long, folks. So long, everybody. And so long to you both, Nick and Patsy. In the strange adventure you have just heard, Nick Carter was impersonated by Lon Clark, Patsy by Helen Choke, Scubby by John Kane. The story was written for Nick Carter by Ralph Berkey. Original music was played by Lou White. The entire production was under the direction of Jock McGregor. Next week at the same time, listen to another curious experience of Nick Carter entitled... The Corpse in the Cab. Or Nick Carter and the Mystery of the Murder in the Park. This story is a copyrighted feature of Street and Smith Publications, Incorporated. The Return of Nick Carter is produced in the studios of WOR and is broadcast over most of these stations every Saturday evening at 7 o'clock Eastern War Time. And don't forget the adventures of Nick's adopted son, Chick Carter, are broadcast over most of these stations Monday through Friday at 5.30 p.m. Eastern War Time. This is Mutual.